Shana Baszler, welcome to Gorilla Position. I know you're having a, a busy old day over in Detroit with lots of media obligations, so I appreciate the time. Um, so firstly, SummerSlam, Detroit, Ford Field, one of the biggest SummerSlams in history, just in terms of the expected crowd in the stadium tomorrow night. How are you feeling ahead of your marquee match with Ronda Rousey, arguably the biggest match of your career? Yeah, yeah. Um... I mean, I think I'm sitting in a good place. My workouts have all gone great. Um, you know, usually when it comes to fight camps, you usually are coming in with some type of injury kind of banged up, but I'm not feeling like that at all. So, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Looking forward to the opportunity. And the the turn on Ronda came as quite a shock in London. I was there. The crowd were going wild for it. It happened quite quickly after you winning the tag titles. But since then, fans have really enjoyed seeing you come out on TV and rip into your best friend on the mic. Um, and you've really shown what you're capable of when it comes to promos. Why has it taken this long to get this version of, of Ronda Rousey on TV? Um, I mean, I think it's just a matter of uh, knowing, you know, the, the, the phrase like pick your battles. And I think this is something that we both finally really fought for. Um, and it really matters to us, you know, not that wrestling in general doesn't matter to us. Obviously it matters to us both, but, um, this story in particular matters to us and, 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 you know, fans, one thing fans are really good at love them or hate them is they can tell when you're faking the funk. And <laughs> I think that you can tell that we're not, and we really care about this. And I think that resonates. So. Well, it really does. And I wanted to talk to you about the story that you're telling, not just on live TV, but in those brilliant pre-tapes that ran on Raw this week. It's been really wonderful to see. So was this always the dream then? You and Rhonda, two best friends, diving into real history to tell a compelling story? It's really funny because like legitimately in 2013, when I moved in with Rhonda, it was like at a time in my life where it was it was like the bottom barrel part of my life right like I had uh injured got an injury and had to have ankle surgery so I missed my original UFC debut you know I was go uh, the world was ending I was going through a break uh, like whatever life was just not rolling for me at the moment um Rhonda flew me out to California long story short I missed my flight coming home and I never came home um until months later to like be like I should stop paying rent on a house I'm no longer living in but uh, and I remember one time after one of Rhonda's fights, um, you know, I had started training at Rhonda's gym and become a main sparring partner of hers. And, um, I remember we were sitting around at the post fight dinner and, uh, at the Armenians that she trained with, it's, I don't know, it's like an Armenian thing. You go around and toast every, everybody gives a long winded toast, uh, around the table and it got to my turn and I remember saying like in 2013, this is like 2013, 2014, I remember saying, Rhonda, you basically t helped me pull my head out of my ass. You saved my career. The only way I can think of, like the best way I can think of to thank you is to work my ass off to give you the fight you deserve. Um, and, you know, obviously at the time we think that means like, oh, we're going to clean out the UFC division. It's going to be like me and her versus the title. At the time, she's beating everyone in like a minute. I'm going to give her a long, hard fight. Um, and it's just funny to think that maybe this is the culmination of that. Like, um, it's really come full circle, but like so much more than people really know. Like, nobody knows that story, you know. Uh, so for us, it really is like big, giant, full circle moment. Do you think, uh, do you think there's going to be a lot of emotion tomorrow night in Ford Field backstage? Well, I think... Yeah, I think there already has been in front of people. So I don't think that it's uh, too far fetched to say this is there's a lot of emotion going into this and there will be coming out of it. Well, I, I can't wait. It's one of the matches I'm, I'm most looking forward to tomorrow night. There's been a lot of speculation that Ronda will be done with WWE after SummerSlam. Is this Ronda's last match? <laughs> if I have anything to say about it, I'm going to make sure you know, uh. she, she needs help leaving the place. But um you know, I know Rhonda better than anyone, and I think that it's safe to say that whether it be a week or a year, it's not like the last we'll ever see of, of Rhonda Rousey, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens.
Um, and just just going back to to you and your story in WWE, it felt like a few years ago, 2020, you won the Elimination Chamber in convincing fashion, but then you lost to Becky in the pandemic WrestleMania, which I thought, you know, it wasn't the right decision. You were really, you know, there was a lot of momentum behind you. And then it seems like things sort of slipped away a bit. What is the difference now, three years later? Well, I think it's just taken some time. If I'm being honest, um, the Be pandemic. honest, come on. Yeah, I mean, the pandemic really derailed a lot of what I think plans were for everyone. You know, I'm not just me. Uh, we didn't know. Like hindsight, it's easy to see, it's easy to say how it should have been, but we didn't know at the time if we were going to be. We were in the PC in front of nobody for. We thought it was going to be a couple of weeks. You know what I mean? Like we didn't. Th- th- it wasn't a plan to be like in the Thunderdome and do this thing for a couple of years. Um, but uh, so it was like, well, let's just. Uh, like, yes, it was mania and yes, we still delivered, but it was still like everyone, we kind of had a meeting and it was like, this is going to be like a transitional thing. And then we'll get right back on track as soon as things are back to normal, not knowing it was going to be forever. Um, so I really think that um, like having a chance in front of live audiences to show what I'm capable of. And then on top of that, I think in disguise, the pandemic maybe was a little bit of a blessing to me because my ring style uh, isn't like big and movement and flashy. It's very like I'm bending this limb in a way it shouldn't go and I'm twisting this off. So during the pandemic, there was no live audience. So the only view people had of that was the camera zoomed right in on that stuff. So I had a good amount of time to teach a live audience when we came back of what I'm doing in the ring so that by the time we had live audiences again, Everyone knew what I was doing when I was grabbing, grabbing their arm and twisting it around because they'd been shown a close up of that for years, you know. So um, I think it's just like the the perfect mix of the audience being trained as to what I do close up, and then having an opportunity to now we're live and kind of show what I do, and then you know credit to to Rhonda and I, I would like to say myself that we we were given this opportunity i think we've really knocked it out of the park in like the best ways we could yeah well it, it's been brilliant and just to just to quickly wrap up but just on that thread because i'm really interested to see which talents are sort of you know getting their flowers if you like on tv since the change of uh creative leadership in wwe do you think that shift helped things with they with the you know the nxt and the triple h history and connection you have do you think that's helped you out well i think for sure i mean it's not a secret i had a lot of success with the way uh i learned and coming up at nxt and the way i was featured um and i think you know triple h just being familiar with my style and my character and what I do, um, it was a, it was a fast track, you know, maybe like the previous creative wasn't used to it. And obviously you saw like the first day I came up, it was like, I was biting and stuff. And there was this, they kind of knew, but they didn't really know. So there was this learning kind of curve for a while. And then the pandemic, I don't even count as a part of that, but like triple H already was familiar with me. Um, And he knows what I can do. He knows, you know, the, my character, like I said. So I think it was just like, okay, now we know we don't need to build it. We just need to get there. Yeah. Well, it's just the beginning and I'm very excited to see what's to come. Shane, best of luck tomorrow night. We're hosting the official SummerSlam watch party here in London. So uh, us UK fans will be cheering you on. I hope you have a, a, a great emotional night with Ronda tomorrow. Thank you very much. It's going to look different than anything else on the card, and I hope you guys like it. Can't wait. Thanks, Shana. Thank you.